Welcome to Python Basics Scopes. I'm Philip with Real Python, and today we'll talk about scopes. Have you ever spotted unusual behavior in your Python code? For example, when variables didn't have the value you expected them to have? Or assigning variables didn't work? In those cases, you may have made contact with the concept of scope. In this course, you will get an introduction to scope. And as you will learn, scope in Python is not just something that makes your code behave weird. Quite the contrary. Once you learned about scope, you gain better control of how your Python scripts work. Here is the map of the journey that we'll go on together. In understanding scope, I will describe to you what scope is in Python and why it's important. You learn about terms like names and namespace. To understand how Python resolves names, I'll introduce the LEGB rule in the second lesson. LEGB stands for Local Enclosing Global and Built-in Scope. You'll explore all of them in lesson 3 and 4. After that, I'll show you the global statement. It's important to know why the global statement exists. I will also show you how to use it, but a word of caution already. Using the global statement can cause issues with your code down the line. That's why we will explore good programming practices in Lesson 6, Preventing Pitfalls. At the end of this course, I'll also give you additional resources if you want to continue your journey into the vast Python sphere. All right, let's start exploring. I finished last lesson by saying you will make your first contact with Python scope. But if you have written any Python code before, you've already worked with a scope. For example, when you assigned a variable in Python. Because the concept of scope rules how variables and names are looked up in your code. A Python scope determines where a name is visible in your program. Let's hop over to idle to investigate Python scopes. Anytime you assign a variable, you create a name. Python uses the location of the name assignment to associate it with a particular scope. For example, if you write total equals 5, you assign a value 5 to a name total at the top level of a module. Now total is part of the global Python scope. When I type total, Python knows that it's 5. You may wonder how Python finds the variable, and that's a really good question. Python scopes are implemented as dictionaries that map names to objects. You may not be familiar with the term dictionary in Python context, but you can think of a dictionary like a real dictionary, where you can look up objects and see their values. Python scopes are implemented as dictionaries, and these dictionaries are commonly called namespaces. As said before, the variable total exists in the global scope. You can check the global namespace dictionary with the help of the global's built-in function. The output is the content of the global namespace. And as you can see at the end of this dictionary, you can find the total name in there and the value 5 that the variable has. Okay, so I use the terms scope and namespace. When we're talking about Python scope, we're talking about a concept. And the namespace dictionary is the implementation of this concept. It's the implementation of scope. But when you talk to other developers, the terms scope and namespace are often used interchangeably. And that's totally fine, usually. What's totally not fine is that I talked about the global scope in a way that may have felt that you should already know what a global scope is. So let's fix that. In the next lesson, I will talk a bit more about different kind of scopes in Python. For example, the global scope. Whenever you use a name such as a variable or a function name, Python searches through different scope levels to determine whether the name exists or not. To resolve a name, Python follows a specific order of scope levels. This order of looking names up is called LEGB rule. The LEGB stands for Local Scope, Enclosing Scope, Global Scope, and Built-in Scope. 
Here is an example. Python looks up a name in a similar way you look for your sunglasses when you want to go out. The sunglasses may be located on your nose already, or they are enclosed in your bag. Otherwise, they may be somewhere in your apartment, and if you can't find them, then you can use your built-in eyes and squint them awkwardly to avoid the sun. Hmm. Does this example make sense? Or do you have a better analogy? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, analogies aside, let's get specific about what the scopes local, enclosing, global, and built-in mean. See you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we will explore the first three scopes of the LEGB rule. The local scope, the enclosing scope, and the global scope. Let's start with the local scope. The local scope contains the names that you define inside a function. Every time you call a function, you're also creating a new local scope. Let's play around with the local scope in the idle scripting window. Here you're creating a local variable named total with the value zero inside of the function print total. Inside the function body, you can access total in your print call. Oh, and by the way, in line three, you're using a formatted string. When you add an equal sign behind the variable name inside the curly braces, then you print out the variable name and the value. Without the equal sign, you would only print the value. Seeing both the name and the value is handy for us right now, because then we don't have to type the variable total double in the string that we are printing. When you run the code, Python calls the function and prints from function total equals zero. So the variable total exists in the local scope of print total. But outside of print total, the variable total does not exist. If you do access the variable outside of the function, so for example, when you add a print function call here, where you show the total variable, or want to show the total variable, and run the code, then Python throws an error. And the reason for this is because the print function in line six is not in the same local scope as the variable definition of total. The E in LEGB stands for enclosing. The enclosing scope is a special scope that only exists for nested functions. Names that you define in the enclosing scope are commonly known as non-local names. Okay, here I adjusted the print total function from before to explore the enclosing scope. In Python, you can nest functions. These nested functions are also called inner functions. In this example, I added an inner function named inner print total to the print total function. I'll not go into detail about inner functions, but I'll give you a link to some real Python resources if you want to learn more about them at the end of this course. When you run the file, you see that total is zero both times, and there is no error, although you don't define the variable total inside of inner print total. This means that the local scope of inner print total can access the enclosing scope, which is the function body of print total. Next up, global scope. The global scope is the topmost scope in a Python program, script, or module. Names are visible from everywhere in your Python code. There is only one global Python scope per program execution. Let's continue with the example from before. This time, the only definition of the total variable is in line 8, where we say total equals 5. You define the total variable, this time in the global scope. That means it's on the top level of your Python file. Now, top level doesn't mean it has to be on line one. It means that it isn't wrapped in a function, for example. To see the global value of total, there's also a print function in line 10, in addition to the print functions in lines three and six. When you run the code, then you can see that the global variable total can be accessed from everywhere. There are no errors and all of our print outputs show the value 5 for the variable total. 
Again, that means all scopes can access the global scope. That's cool, but it gets better. You can actually define a variable with the same name in every scope. So let's add the variable total in line three, which is in the inner function named inner print total, and give it the value seven. Then let's move to line six and add another variable named total and give it the value 12. Let's run the code and see what happens. So although we have the same variable name, Python doesn't get confused because you define the variable total in different scopes. In the inner function, total has the value 7. In your print total function, total has the value 12. And in your global scope, total has the value 5. Okay, so far we have L, E, and G of the LEGB acronym. The local scope, the enclosing scope, and the global scope. In the next lesson, we will tackle the fourth letter of LEGB and inspect the built-in scope.